Hello guys, welcome to Prep Coding, and today we are going to solve all indices of n. Right? So let me first explain the question to you. The question basically says that you will be given an array and some data. Suppose this is the array and the data is three, and we need to find all the indices of array that consists this data, right? So suppose if the data we need to find is three, then we need to return an array we need to return an array which consists all the all the indices of this three right so this three is present at one at five and at seven so our answer array will consist one five and seven so i hope the question is very clear to you guys so now let us discuss the solution approach for this problem right so the most important and the trickiest part with this question is that we don't know the size of our answer array right we need to return an array but we don't know that how many times three is going to occur in this very array right in this array how many times three is present we don't know and we need to return an array so we need to find some way we need to find some way to to get the size of this array okay size of this answer array so for doing this we will use a property property of recursion okay what is that property is the property is basically that once we go uh, recursion works two ways okay the first is it goes from bottom to top okay so we will go from 2 to 3 3 to 6 6 to 9 9 to 8 and so on so this is from bottom to top and then recursion also comes back and recursion also comes back right so what if what if we count the number of threes we count the number of threes while we are going up and fill our answer array while we are go coming back right this way this way what we can get is when we are going up when we are going up from this two to four we will get the size of our answer array which in this case is three, which in this case is three. Okay, we will get the size of our answer array. And when we reach our base case here, when we reach our base case, we can create an answer array of our size and that fill that answer array when we are coming back in the recursion. Okay, when we are coming back in the recursion. Now, I know that it won't be clear to a lot of you guys, but don't worry. Before we code, we are going to see a dry run and according to that dry run, we will try to write a program for this problem and i hope that after that dry run what we are going to do will be clear to everyone okay so here i am drawing a recursive stack okay recursive stack so the a stack for my recursion right so see first let me show you the function okay so this is the function that we are provided this is the function that we are provided and it have a array x the data that we are trying to find the index that we are currently on and fsf now what is this fsf so this fsf is this fsf is basically found so far found so far okay so this fsf is the variable in which we are going to count the number of occurrence of our data when we are going upwards in the recursion okay when we are going upward in the recursion in this fsf we are going to store the count of the data right so what were the uh, so our function what was the in, uh, arguments of our function right first was the array the second was the data we are trying to find the third was index and the fourth was found so far right found so far now let us see how we are going to approach this problem okay so first thing is initially initially when this recursive function will be called say the address of this array is 4k so this array is 4k the value of x is 3 which is never going to change okay we are searching for 3 right the index will initially will be 0 because we will be starting from here right we will be starting from here and found so far will also be 0 because we are only starting right now okay so right now when the first recursive call is made we are here okay what i will do here is i will check whether or not i am equal to the data am i the data no 2 is not equal to 3 
so what we will do is we will make recursive call to this first index okay 4k searching for 3 index is now 1 and found so far is still 0 because I was not able to find any 3 on the 0th index right now I, I am at the third, uh, first index the value is 3 so am I equal to the data yes I am equal to the data so found so far found so far should be increased by 1 right so when I call to this second index that is 6 what I will do is I will increase the index by 1 and found so far will also be increased okay now I am at this index 2 okay so again I will check am I equal to data no I am not equal to data so what I will simply do is I will increase the index and found so far will remain 1 okay now I am at index 3 am I equal to data again no so 4k 3 the index will be increased by 1 and found so far will remain 1. Now I am at 4th index. Am I equal to data? No. So again 4k 3 index increased by 1. Found so far remains the same. So now I am at the 5th index. Now I am at the 5th index. Okay. So for the 5th index 4k 3 am I equal to data? Yes I am equal to data. That means the, when I call to the next index that is 6. I will increase the value of found so far, right? So calling the index 6 and increasing the value of found so far. So did you find a pattern here? Did you find a pattern here? What we exactly trying to do is at every point, at every point when I am at any index, what I do is, what I do is, suppose I am at 0, what I do is I check if I am, if me is equals to the data we are searching. If this is true, if this is true, then when I call to the next index, I will increase the value of found so far. Okay. And, and if this is false, then simply I will call the next index and won't increase the value of found so far. Right. Right. So this is exactly what we discussed that what we will do is while going up in the recursion, while going up in the recursion, when we are going up, what we will do is we will count the number of and number of times we got the data right we will count the number of times we got the data so this much is done let me quickly do the rest of the dry run so 4k3 index will be 7 will be called for 2 now 7 is equals to 2 3 so 4k3 8 index will get found so far as 3 and the ninth index will also get found so far as Three. Now I have reached here. What will happen here? Am I equal to data? No, I am not equal to data. So I will call the tenth index, search for three, and the found so far is three. Now this ten is my base case. This ten is my base case. Why? Because I have I have run out of array indexes, right? I do not have any more elements in my array. That means I my index has become equal to array dot length. So this is my base case this is my base case and what we decided in our base case that we will create an answer array of size of found so far so how many elements we found we found three elements so we will create a answer array of found so far so that is but two things are already done okay while we were going up in the recursion we counted the number of we counted the occurrence of three that came out to be three and when we reached at our base case we created an answer array of size three right so two of our tasks are done now the only task that is left is while we are coming back in the recursion while we are coming back in the recursion we need to fill this answer array with the indices indices where three appeared right so this is the only task left now so guys now let us try to write the code for whatever the approach we have discussed till now right so this is our function all indices as I have told you four parameters first is the array second is the data we are trying to find index that is on which index of the array we are right now and found so far this is the count of number of times this data was found in this array okay so the first task was what was I doing first I was checking if I am equal to data so array index is equal to data okay 
so if i am equal to data i need to do something and if i am not equal to data i need to do something right but what do i need to do if i am equal to data i simply need to call my neighbor call my neighbor okay the next element so index plus one and i need to increase the count of found so far right and and if i am not equal to data if i am not equal to data what i need to do is i need to call my neighbor but in that case i will not increase the count of found so far simple right so this is the process the first task is done this was the first task while we are going up we are counting we are counting the number of occurrence counting the number of occurrence so this is our first task right okay so moving on moving on to our second task what, what was the second task once we hit the base case once we hit the base case we need to make an array of this array answer of what size of the size of found so far because found so far is storing the count of count of the times the data was found in the array right so what was our base case if our index becomes equals to array dot length what we do is we simply create a new array so integer now i'm calling it base because this array is in the base case new int and what is the size found so far because found so far is storing the size right and i will return this array so both our tasks are done first we counted when we were going up and when we reached our base case we created a new array of that size right now i am returning that array from the base case so i also need to store that array somewhere okay i also need to store that return value right so int recursive answer equal to that value right so till now our work is done so two tasks are done now the third task when we are coming back when we are coming back what we need to do is we need to store the index right we need to store the index look here our two tasks were first when i went up i counted the values and found so far when i reached my base case i created a new uh, i created a new array with the name base right which will store my answer base now what will happen is when i come back in recursion at every point when i get a 3 what I need to do is put this index, put this index in my answer array, right? In my answer array, right? So this is the third task. So this is the case. See, if array index is equals to x, this is the case where I will find my data. So in this case, what I need to do is in my answer array, recursive answer, I need to put at the place of found so far index. Now I will explain this in the dry run, but I am writing okay and then return my recursive answer so this is my third task which when i am coming back from recursion will work right and here also i need to return my recursive answer so this third part i will explain in the diet dry run of course now let us try if this works so yes accepted let me try to submit this then we will see the dry run that what I did in the last, you will understand with the dry run. It's very simple. Okay. So, yes, it is accepted. So, uh, let me take this code to my whiteboard and let us try to understand what exactly I did here. Okay. So, here it is. This is my code. So, let us take a quick recap. What we did is well, while going up in the recursion, this is while going up in the recursion we counted while going up this side in the recursion we counted the number of number of occurrence that was three so found so far was three right till here found so far was three now this is my base case here in my base case i created a new array base which is basically my answer array now while i'm coming down what i did is see this return base will return this base array right will return this base array now how i will handle this base array is this base array is being caught this base array is being caught in these recursive answers right in these recursive answers so what exactly is happening is see 
I reached the base case. This was my base case. I came down from this base case. Okay. Now what I told you guys is wherever I found a three, wherever I found a three, what I will do is I will store the this index in my recursive answer. So I got from here to here. Now when I'm coming back, is this a three? No. Is this a three? No. Is this a three? Yes, this is a three. So this is a three. What I need to do is here I need to store my index that is seven in my recursive answer in my recursive answer right so this is exactly that condition that if array index is equals to x right so array index that is three is equals to x yes data three that means i need to store this recursive answer in my found recursive answer in my at the place of found so far so what is found so far see when See this stack when the index was seven, the value of found so far was two. So what will be the base array? We have three. We have three. The size of my answer array is three, zero, one, two. So the seven will be stored at the second position. Why? Because when we were going up, the value of found so far for seven was two, right? Found so far for seven was two. So exactly that is what I am doing. I stored I stored the index that is seven in my recursive answer at the place of found so far. So found so far is two. So at the second index, I stored two. Now again, come back here. We need not to do anything here. We need to do something. Why? Because the element at the index is three. So again, I am inside this condition. Why? Because the element at index is equals to three. I'm inside this condition, right? So what we do is we check the value of recursive, we check the value of FSF for, for index 5. So this is index 5. So the value of FSF for index 5 is 1. That is at the first index in my answer array, what I need to store is the index right now. What is the index right now? So 5, 5. Okay. Now again, come back, do nothing, come back, do nothing, come back, do nothing. Now come to this one. We come to this one. Again, the condition is same. The condition is same. See, when my element is not equal to the data, I'm doing nothing. I'm simply returning the recursive answer. That is, I'm simply returning that array back. When, when my index is equal to the data, in that case only what I'm doing is, I'm checking the value of found so far. So for the first index, what is the value of found so far? Zero. For the first index, the value of found so far is zero. So at my zeroth index, what will I store? I will store the current index. What is the current index? I was at one. So one. Okay. So, so one, right? So this is my answer array. And you see my answer array is storing one, five and seven, which are the indexes of three, one, five and seven. So hope you guys understand this, um, understood the approach. What we did is I will give you a just once again, very simple approach. What we did, did is first, while moving up in the recursion, we counted the number of the date, the number of time the data occurred. When we reached the base case, we created an answer array of that very size of the count. And when we came back from this recursion, what we did is we stored the indexes in our answer array. In our answer array, we so stored the indexes. Okay. So guys, that was all for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you like what we do, please subscribe to Fat Coding.